So welcome everybody. Welcome to the Energy Play Shop number 26. And today is November the 17th, 2022. The topic today is really, as you can see, the, this is the, the sacral chakra um, symbol. Um, okay, maybe I need to move out so you guys can see this. So that is the second chakra, also known as the sacral chakra. The, the last couple of weeks I've been talking about clearing our root chakra. So my intention is to go with root chakra and then sacral chakra and then also third chakra. So so clear the the first three chakras, which is really the more um humanistic chakras. Uh, the reason I do that is because a lot of the times, especially for more spiritual people, it's it's so easy to to um get hung up on all the you know okay own meditation we are developing the the higher chakras we 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 emphasize on increasing our um, frequency however without stable balance roots which is really our first three chakras it's very hard for us to go higher if we, we if we are not grounded, if we are not balanced in our lower chakra, so especially now that there is so much energy coming in to lift everybody, so that's why I specifically want to make sure that we do the work of clearing anything that is still um, blocking us from being able to integrate all the higher energies coming in. So that's why I've been focusing on clearing the, the, the lower chakras. Lower locationally does not mean that lower as in less worthy. It's, it's, there is no chakra that is less worthy. They are all, each one is there for a purpose to, in order to support us to um, create the life that we want while we are playing on planet Earth. So second chakra. Um, so I will still be following the, the format of doing the uh, a presence meditation and then going into talking about what the, the sacral chakra is about and how we can tell whether our second chakra is out of balance or not and also how to rebalance the, once we find out what it is that needed to be or needed some um, rebalancing. So any other questions or comments before I go into the presence meditation? Okay, so let's begin by doing our presence meditation. So just take a deep breath in everybody. And then let it all go slowly. And then take another deep breath in. And really allow yourself to breathe in slowly and fully inflate your lungs and your chest. And then slowly release your breath. And do this one more time. Just breathe in fully and slowly. And when you can breathe in no more, then simply allow your breath to slowly come out. And continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath, meaning to take your time breathing in and also take your time breathing out while it's still comfortable for you. So no need to make yourself become tired. 
just from trying to elongate your breath. The idea is to simply use your breath to relax yourself. And just do this a bit more, a few more times until you really feel your body becoming more relaxed. And when you feel your body becoming relaxed, then you can start to really set the intention of calling back all of your attention and all of your energy back towards you. So in this moment, be very, very selfish. All of the attention that you may have sent out to your loved ones or on your work or doing whatever it is that you do during the day, you send out your attention, you send out your energy to the people, places and things around you in this moment. Take all of them back. Call them all back. And just feel your own attention and energy coming back inside your own body. And when you set that intention to come back to yourself. Feel that shift energetically as well. You may feel it as becoming more present. You may feel it as a weight, not a big weight, but a light weight, because as your energy comes back in to you, your energy has that just a little bit of weight. So just feel more within yourself. And set that intention to focus everything within yourself and intentionally call back, not just your energy and attention, call back all parts of you. There are parts of you that are energetic. And sometimes it may decide to go somewhere else. For whatever reasons, in this moment, call all of that back to you. So that you feel that you are all here. You are all back to yourself in this moment. And just keep breathing in and feel more present. And when you feel that all of you are here in this moment, then you can open your eyes if you have that them closed and come all the way back into the room and take a deep breath let it all go and come all the way back into the room so welcome back everybody <laughs> so I am going to um, start to talk a little bit more about what the um, what is the the sacral chakra. So, as, so at first, where is it? So, in terms of location in our body, it's about two inches below our 
navel, so below our belly button, about two inches below, and it is inside our body. So it is about uh, a gut area. Um, and also that's also the area of where our sexual organs may be. So two inches below our belly button, and also it is a little bit, I would say, um, closer to our sacrum, to, to the, the hip bone at the back, then right in the middle. So, so that's where the second chakra is. That's the, the sacral chakra. And from the location, you kind of notice that it is close to our sexual organs. So it's connected to our creativity and also feelings of intimacy. So intimacy does not mean that is it has to be with a, a special partner. It just means that being able to connect with either ourselves or someone else in a more personal and vulnerable way. It's also about trust because you, you will only be vulnerable and be able to connect with someone at a more um, like um, deeper level when you trust that person. So it has to do with trust. And also it's about being able to build a relationship or a way of working with other people. So that's what I mean by by um, relationship doesn't mean that they ha they have to be related to you. It's just that you are able to um, work with other people and feel that there is that that bond. And because this area is kind of close to the kidney as well, so the kidney is also part of the um, sacral the organs that that's included in the sacral chakra as well. And all of this is, there is a um, water is really the, the, the element, the, the core element that's associated with the sacral chakra. And it's also the chakra for emotions, for feelings, and also for pleasure joy, all those things. So it's pretty important chakra because you have sex, you have joy, and you also have creativity. All three very important things in our lives. It's part of the second chakra, part of the sacred chakra. So, and um, let's see what else is included. Uh, oh, okay. And because it is the second chakra, I also want to bring out that second. So two, two is also the the, the number that um, kind of express polarity as well. So positive, negative, um, white and black. So all anything that is polarized, that is um, different from us. So it's how, that's how we, um, so that's also, if there's any imbalance, then we can feel it in our sacral chakra as well, because it's about polarity. So that's why it's also about boundaries, how we relate to other people. Do we feel connected with them? Do we trust them? Or do we um, feel that we cannot agree with them that we that you know I am always right and what they're thinking is they're crazy they they're stupid and I don't want to be like them so do we actually are we um confident in ourselves enough that or are we open enough so that we we're able to look at someone else's opinion and instead of reacting and and standing strong and being um, really hot head and, and my, it's my way or the highway. 
or can we actually be objective and look at someone else opinion even though they the, their opinion may be completely different from ours and be able to see their perspective from from uh, their point of view and understand how come they have they come up with a completely different point of view from me so so it's more about do we um do we reject someone else or do we make take the effort to try to understand where someone um co is coming from why they have their opinion that's very different from us because um, creativity is not really uh, i would say fifth dimension creativity it's not so much about creating from me for me it's not about me 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 anymore fifth dimension creativity is really about creating something that serves me of course serve yourself and it's also good for other people it's good for the universe as well so that's why uh, when we look at the, the the second chakra the sacral chakra from um, understanding it and also how to understand it from the fifth dimension point of view is that it's about integrating polar opposites about being open to listen to other people and come up with something that is not just um, good for you but also good for everyone else so it's about integrating polar opposites so that we can come up with something that is completely new and it's good for everyone so that is the the, the next level of creation so all of this is sacred chakra the so next thing is how do we know that we are the sacral chakra is imbalanced you know how can we tell well you know what <clears throat> physical symptoms could be for example um, the, the organs that's within this area is the bladder the kidney so if you have any bladder issues or kidney issues then you know that there is an imbalance within the sacral chakra or if you have any discomfort um, during sex, or if, um, so any kind of infertility, any kind of issues with having sex, then those would be sacral chakra imbalance. If you have any um, urinary or reproductive problems, and if you have any ovarian cysts or any kind of cysts in, in the sacral area, then that would be a physical symptom of imbalance. Or if you have any pain in the, the, the lower, so, so kind of in the, the belly area below your belly button, about two inches below, or in your hips area, and you know that there is an imbalance in the sacral chakra. So these are all physical symptoms. Now, some of the psychological or emotional symptoms of imbalance. So what would those be? It could be a, a diminish or lower sex drive. Or if, on the other hand, if you have um, like addiction to to sex, so there, there are actually um, addiction overindulgence, whether it is actually engaging in sex or actually thinking about sexual fantasy. So overindulgence and also um, a lower sex drive, both are really two opposite uh, spectrum of imbalance in, in terms of psychological issues. And also because um, our sacred chakra is about how we relate to other people. So if you feel lonely or if you feel anxiety with people or when you are by yourself, either way, 
or if you feel insecure um, about yourself. And so emotional imbalance uh, in, in terms of if there's any depression or um, like really a lot of anxiety, then you know that that's also an indication of sacral chakra imbalance. Or if you have trouble setting boundaries, you um, are more of a, a victim mentality. Or if you, uh, the, of course, the opposite is you like to, um, you don't care about other people's boundaries. It's like if you only think about yourself, then that's also uh, a more psychological issues as well. So anything to do with um, emotional imbalance, let's say if you, if you, um, during the daytime, you may feel anxiety at night you may have nightmares or really unpleasant dreams while you're at while you're sleeping then you know that there is an imbalance so i've been talking for a while just want to stop just to see if there's any questions uh, comments <clears throat> um sacral chakra so because it, it's about sex joy and creativity so pretty much i would say yeah pretty much everybody is screwed <laughs> or has some imbalance because it's just um I'm, I'm talking about there we have so many hang-ups about sex we have so many limitations or um, different um, views of, of sex. So, of course, it's going to lead to some um, imbalance in how our sacral chakra is. And also, if you look around you, how many people around you you see is really um, embrace joy and welcome joy into their life um, very enthusiastically all the time um not as many as we would like to see so and also the other thing is creativity how many of us uh feel that we are a creative person or is really feeling very comfortable um of ourselves being the creator of our own life um not too many people because um, a lot of people that at least from my experience, uh, feel kind of powerless. Yeah. So especially the um, the events that have transpired in the last couple of years, we kind of feel like we, we don't have a lot of say in what's going on in our lives, or at least at the very least, we feel challenged. So pretty much, I would say, that our sacral chakra is out of balance. So, <clears throat> so now, how do we balance it? Of course, that's the next, next thing. So how do we balance our sacral chakra? So it really depends. Um, I want to talk about the, the, the physical symptoms first. So let's look at the the physical symptoms um so without picking on kidneys or bladder or um any one particular physical symptoms i just want to talk about physical symptoms as a whole is the first thing if you want to start to rebalance your sacral chakra the first thing is really to reconnect with your body especially the the body part that is giving you some symptoms so um so just want to to recap very quickly is we have a soul and we also have something that is called an entity which is our earth soul so we have, have our cosmic soul we have our earth soul we have our body so each and every one of us is 
is not just, there's not just one. We, even within ourselves, there it, we are actually a composite. We are a, um, a complex. We are not just one. So that's why when we have physical symptoms, it, the first thing we need to look at is how well are we connected to our body? How well are we relating to our body? Because the sacral chakra is about relationships. So the first relationship is really what is our relationship with ourselves, with all the parts that make ourselves up. And um, we have a lot of, I would say, well, okay. <laughs> I can't really say use we. Let me just use myself as an example. So for me, um, I think for the longest time in my, uh, during my spiritual journey, I keep on thinking that, oh, my body is somehow second class. It's not good. So in order to grow spiritually, I have to um, discipline my body and somehow fight with the 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 yearnings or the the demands of my body and that my 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 soul and spirit the spiritual thing is to deny the body so that's so that's really created a um, a disconnection between the the soul and the body and it's really the the last couple of years um, maybe last five years that I really become more and more present that we are here to embody the our soul to embody the the highest potential of ourselves as a soul so the embody really is about the body so it's not so the body is, is a very important part of being on earth if we are no longer on earth, if we are um, <clears throat> somewhere in a different dimension where we don't need a body, then yes, the body may not be as important. But on earth, in this moment, right now, our job is really to embody. So the body is a very important part of um our spiritual journey. So reconnecting with our body is a big part of the work. So how how do we reconnect with our body? It's really to just um so being present. So present. So the first the, the first meditation earlier today is about calling back all parts of ourselves into our body being with our body just 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 spending time with our body while we are connected to our spiritual the spiritual being part of ourselves and also understanding the the um, that the body has requirements has demands it has preferences is not about denying the body. It's about working with the body and to take the body's um, consideration in as well. So I just want to share that, you know, um, I think maybe about two, three years, uh, or um, actually longer, maybe about four years now, I've been trying to get to the point where I am, am pescatarian, so eating fish or seafood as my main source of meat, and then incorporating it more and more vegetables into my diet. The thing is, my body does not like, um, does not like fish very much. So, and of course, I because I really want to get to the point where I, I want to eat less meat and slowly transition even from being a pescatarian to being vegetarian. However, my body just does not like fish. 
So I would actually just be, I would um, have a lot of temptations about going to back to eating other sources of meat rather than sticking with seafood. So got to the part where point where I really look at my really, you know, come to terms with what where my body is right now and and get to the point where okay so I would not try to force myself to eat fish and really honor my my body's preference for other kinds of meat other than fish so I think that is a a way that that's how I work it out is to um, work with my body and really take my body's preference in mind while not trying to say, okay, spiritually, yes, I should eat only vegetables, but you know, my body still needs, I still have that, a, a, a lot of cravings for these um, for non-fish, so so seafood does not work for me. So this is really my way of working with my body and not thinking that, oh, I have to suppress my body and, and deny my body. Yes, I'm working with my body, and I also know that at some point when my body mm, and my soul both agree that okay, I'm going to only eat um, certain foods that is of the highest vibration for myself. Whatever the highest vibration mean or translate to in that moment. Instead of only thinking that, okay, oh, vegetables are high vibration or certain kind of, of uh, like fish is high vibration and, and all of that. So that's what I mean by connecting with my own body or connecting with the body and not trying to suppress what the body is like where the body is because when we disconnect from the body when we don't take the, the 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 other point of view and only think okay spiritually this is what i need to do it's it's really about um, disconnecting with myself, which is my body is a part of who I am in this on this playground. So reconnecting and honoring where your body is, and also um, finding the the best way to support your body and also support the requirements of your soul and what spirituality is, is um, going to create a better relationship between yourself. So this is really the, the I would say the one of the way to come into oneness with yourself is really Honoring all parts of yourself and not thinking that oh, spirituality is the most important body. It's you know not important and going through that. So reconnecting with your body, just being with your body and listening to what your body actually needs and to have no judgment and not saying that you have to give in to your body's demand hundred percent no it's it's about looking at all parts of yourself and the the requirements of all parts of yourself and coming up with a creative solution that is going to serve all parts of yourself so that all parts of yourself feel satisfied and it's not like they are being um somehow strong armed into giving in is that it it is a true coming together rather than 
um, a false solution, that it is a true solution. And that's how you come into connecting with your body. And when you really sit with your body and listen to your body and notice what makes your body happy, what your body actually needs rather than what you, you think it needs. And being able to listen to all parts of yourself to come up with the, the, the best solution is something that is going to go a long way in starting to rebalance whatever body parts that you have you may have that is out of balance and the next thing that you can do to rebalance physical symptoms is to um, connect to the emotions because each body part in each organ has an emotion for example kidney is about fear so if you have kidney issues then really sit with your kidneys, really, you know, um, set the intentions and really connect with your kidney, the, the body parts in, in yourself that is giving you some feedback or symptoms to let you know that it is out of balance. Let's say if my right kidney is feeling some pain there, then it's really to Focus on my right kidney and really notice what is there. Is there any emotions? Is there any emotion? Is there fear? If it is fear, then fear of what? What kind of fear are you dealing with? So connecting with the emotional part of it and then um, really bringing light to and recognizing this emotions and also f knowing how come you have this emotion. Is it because of a belief? Is it because of something happening? Is it because of a trauma? So a lot of times um, a trauma may, may have happened. It could be a year or even two years before and until your um, body, physical body start to give you symptoms. And when you actually feel any symptom, uh, any pain in your body, you may have very conveniently forgotten uh, what kind of things happened already. You may have actually, um, you know, uh, had, had a, a real physical trauma that is causing that pain. And because your body didn't give you a, the feedback right away, so you forgot about it. So connect with the body part that is out of balance or is giving you some symptom and remember what caused it because for everything that's happening, there is a cause. So is it emotions? And deal with any trauma. Um, I especially want to bring up trauma because trauma, uh, for one thing, it's it could be something that happened um, a couple of years ago that you don't remember, and um, and also trauma could be something that is overwhelming. So when you're dealing with trauma, is to really um, go slow and go. And even for emotional, um, any trapped emotions because of the trauma is to really go slowly. Don't try to overwhelm yourself. It's to do it bit by bit. And um, with patience, though, when you connect with your body and really reassure your body that, yes, we had that trauma. It could have been an accident. It could have been, let's say, you were in a car accident then um, connect with your body and let your body know that, yes, that was an accident. And from now on, um, I'm, I'm going to be, let's say, if you are dr the, the driver, then you're going to be a better driver. So promise yourself that. And also let your body know that you've learned from that mistake and you're going to now become more conscious and be aware of 
your body because as a soul we may like um, excitement but a body um, needs to be safe so especially when you go through some trauma your body is still hanging on to the the, the extreme fear or ex extreme emotions that's being trapped in your body so the first thing you have to do is to really reassure your body that it is it's okay now the it's you know, that event has passed and that you are a more responsible um driver you are more responsible creator of your the rest of your life so re-establishing that trust between your body and the rest of you. So that's also very important to rebalance your chakra. And the other thing is, um, I think Sibu James recently, uh, I think it was last Tuesday, not this past Tuesday, but the Tuesday before, he taught us how to do alternate power healing so ultimate power which is something that i i talked about before this we have the the ultimate power center within our body which knows and has um all the information in order to heal ourselves so we actually have the that power to heal ourselves we just have to activate it really be in a meditative state and then activate the ultimate power center connect to the ultimate power um, supplier and then connect to the 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 um the 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 heart part so so then when you connect all of your own um healing power then you can heal that part of your body that needs to be rebalanced so that's also we already have that power so just want to remind everybody and also sacral shower uh, uh, chakra clearing is um <clears throat> so our sacral sh chakra is below our two fingers below our belly button so a very easy way to rebalance this is really to massage this area so we for women we have our womb in this area so just kind of um use your your fingers so so that you are more sensitive and just kind of touch and lightly massage your womb area just go in circular motion and go all the way around your womb area and so just go all the way around your womb area to lightly massage that area that is a great way to rebalance it and also another way is um, what I also do is because we can run energy between our hands because we know that we can, there's energy between our hands. So you can have one hand in front and one hand at the back so that you, um, you so your body, the, the sacral chakra part of your body is sandwiched in between your two hands so when you do that then you start to run energy between the palms of your two hands and you can visualize either white light or gold or blue or orange so why each of these so orange is the the chakra the color that's associated with the sacral chakra. So using, so um, just imagining this orange color energy that's flowing in between your palms, that's going to supply 
this area with a healing color that is going to rebalance it. So you may want to do white because white is really um, all, it's really all purpose. So white is the pure, so pure purity of light itself. So pure energy. So you're just running pure energy in between your palms. So why gold or silver? Silver is really more of a feminine energy. Gold is more of a masculine energy because within this, um, within the our womb is really when you when we are creating, we need a balance of both feminine and masculine energy. So sometimes we may have an imbalance of you know too much feminine energy, not enough masculine energy. That may also affect how our creativity are. Some so when we run both gold and silver energy, it balances out our masculine and the feminine as well. So those are the ways that we can use energy to heal our the body parts. So any questions so far? So you all know how to heal yourself, the physical parts. Okay, pressing on. And now let's get to the more emotional or psychological imbalance. So the three things that's really, um, or I should say really, um, three things, so sex, joy, creativity. So each one of these, so just pick, pick one, because um, chances are when your sacral chakra uh, is out of balance, then you may have emotional issues in all three of these areas. However, just, just start with one. Um, and um, also this, so how do you um, start to get at the emotionals? So pick one, let's say sex. So just think of the um, idea of I am comfortably enjoying sex. This is just think of this. So I want to comfortably enjoy sex. And then what what comes up? So you may hear voices like at least I would hear voices like um, it's like I want to make sure that the other person is um, so you would say okay it, I have to be married or um, what kind of relationship I have with that person and or uh, I I need this that person to be a a man or a woman so the the right gender or I need them to be uh, a certain age a certain height a certain look so then when you declare something then all the the parts uh, or the beliefs within you that that disagree with that statement will start to come up for you then you know that those are beliefs that is messing with you and sex and you being able to enjoy sex so then all you need to do is just clear all those beliefs that comes up so i'm just picking sex picking on sex it the same thing can be do can be done for joy so i feel joy all the time And then what comes up? So, you know, 
why do you feel joy all the time? How can I feel joy all the time? It's like there are, like my life is not perfect. It's, it's not joyful. I don't have this. I don't have X, Y, or Z. So all when you hear those um, other voices coming up, then you know that those are really the beliefs within yourself that is robbing you of your joy. And the same thing for creativity is just declare, I am the creator of my life. And then you would hear things or mostly your own beliefs that does not correspond to you being the creator of your own life. You may say, well, you're not good enough, um, you're not rich enough, you're not young enough, you're not wealthy enough. So all those other things may come up. So those are the beliefs that you have to clear out. And you know what? The uh, good thing is you guys already know how to clear beliefs. So um, a couple, I, would, I forgot which, which play shop it is that we've covered how to clear um, beliefs that no longer support you. So you already have the tool to do that. It's the same thing is for clearing emotions. So you, you guys know how to release emotions. So when you say this, the, the, the statements, I comfortably enjoy having sex. And then what emotions come up? Okay, maybe anxiety. Like at least I have anxiety coming up. So then you know that the that's one of the emotions that's really robbing you of being able to enjoy sex comfortably. So release those emotions, and so and so on and so on. Okay. So. And the other thing is to reconnect. So once you've cleared all the, the beliefs that's not supporting you to be able to have a balance, sex, joy, and creation, creativity within your life, then um, you can clear beliefs, emotions. And then once you've done some of those clearing, then you can start to reconnect with your own unique soul signature because each one of us are unique. Our soul is unique. It has a, um, a very unique vibration that is, there's no two alike because that's how we are all created. We like our fingerprints, no two persons, no two soul has this exactly the same signature. So when we can connect with our unique soul signature, then the next thing is to integrate the polarity between who we are as a soul and who we are from our ego's point of view. So our ego is really the the part of us that is that has um, that we have created um, in order to how should I say it to play this game in the the the, the negative matrix. So so now that we are getting to the point where we want to raise our awareness, then we have to integrate the difference between our unique soul signature, who we are as a spirit, and also the who we are as our ego. Neither are completely right or completely wrong. So it is really about integrating the two 
parts of ourselves in such a way, in a very unique way, that we start to find who we truly are in this lifetime. And that's when we can integrate those polarity between our unique soul signature and our ego point of view, we can start to come together and reconnect with the divine creator within ourselves. And when we can do those things, then we can definitely become who we truly are um, and also have a balanced sacred chakra because as we, we are creators, so anything that is imbalanced within our sacred chakra is, which is where our creativity is, because um, whether it is for a, a woman or for a man, that is where our sexual organs are. That's so our sexual organs is really how we create the next generation of ourselves. So from a, um, a physical creation, being able to create another human being, which is another um, part of us that is going to take what we have learned, take our DNA, take our, our lineage, take all our, of our experience and be able to pass it down. So that is really the ultimate um, creation and when we start to reclaim who we are as a creator by balancing our sacral chakra then we can get to the point where we reclaim ourselves as a creator as the divine creator of our own life any questions that's really all I want to say tonight. You guys are very quiet tonight. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Well, I'm just thinking about um, like people that are in, in careers that are creative, like people that are artists or people that are poets or something like that. Is that an imbalance of their second chakra? Um, I don't think so. Um, it really depends. Because as a creator, we can create in all areas of our lives. So if a <clears throat> if someone is able to create, uh, if their uh, career is really like to create, um, be creative in certain areas, whether it is uh, painting or creating something. Um, if they can only create in that area and they have trouble creating in other areas of their lives, let's say if they, um, because they are so good in their job that they cannot create a, uh, a family life or then, then there is an imbalance. But if they are creator in their work, but they are able to um, be created in other areas of their, their lives, then most likely they are not, yeah, they, they are balanced. Okay. Because okay. as like, it's not easy being a human being because we, we, there are so many areas of our lives so in order to really um, have a full life and feel like we enjoy in life. So, mm. yeah. okay, so thanks. It depends. Some people, they are great creators in all areas of their lives. And we envy and hate those people. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> we definitely look to those people as um, examples. 
<laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's really about um right, balance. It's really about balance. Okay. Any other questions, comments? If not, let's do this 